welcome to my channel, I'm Fornux, and today, thanks to ArenaNet, we are heading into the wonderful world of concept art, specifically looking at environmental and character concepts and comparing them to the in-game assets they have inspired. All the art shown here is found in the Art of Guild Wars 2 publication. I've selected 19 pages of this beautiful book and spent a few days hunting locations and characters in Tyria, which I think were inspired or influenced by these works. There are a few images that I could not marry to locations, so there is, at the end of the video, a little hunt for you. Let me know in the comments if my locations were a hit or a miss, and please do share your screenshots with me here in the comments or at Creighton underscore Herald on the Twitterverse. Now, there are timestamps below stating the artist, the image, and the in-game location I think was inspired by them. So, let's dive into all the eye candy. Now, the first artist's work we will be looking at is Daniel. I'm gonna say Ducey, it's probably wrong. My apologies, sir. So, the first image we are looking at is, of course, Divinity's Reach. It is easy, so easy, to see that the whole city is inspired and influenced by this art. On a personal side note, DR is one of my favourite locations in Tyria, and the palace gardens are just a joy. You will find the city and its wonderful vistas in many of my videos. Sky ships. These iconic sails have been seen in many, many locations across Tyria, most notably attached to the Coden ice ships seen here in the Bitterfrost frontier, and of course carrying the fleet of Zephyrite galleons into the annals of history. I might spend a lazy day just roaming Tyria hunting for all those sails hidden in plain sight. Branded stars, to my knowledge, which is sadly all too limited, these beautiful, destructive Catherine wheels have only fairly recently found their way off the artist's canvas. I've shown them here in Vabi, but there are similar variations in Bitterfrost Frontier and other branded locations. In-game, these structures seem capable of carving their way through mountains, creating surreal and beautiful landscapes. The lion-faced furnace, with its elegant to my eye, Victorian-inspired ornate details, let me know if you agree or disagree in the comments, can be found throughout the Black Citadel, seen at the crest of every portal wall, decorating the player's home instance, and on the plains of Ashford. If you have spotted these handsome kitties elsewhere, please do let me know below. The Norn capital of Holbreak is awash with this style of architecture. Tall, imposing, and built to impress the structures echo the shape language of the race. It also says much about the Norn physiology, building structures that are impossible to heat and weatherproof in any way, shape, or form whilst they live in the frigid north. These next works belong to Kike Kotaki. I apologize for butchering your name, the smoldering building. Now, looking at this stunning structure, my thoughts were taken straight to the fire heart rise. The whole region is a fire pit of impossible structures, all erected in the worship of the Fire Legion's Titan gods. Now, the Incendio Templus of Diesa Plata also came to mind when looking at this building. These incredible ruins stretch across the southeastern edge of the zone and are feast for the eyes. The weight of history finds home in the broken beauty of their forgotten glory, built to keep the char at bay and broken by the Fire Legion's cauldrons of cataclysm. Ascalon is a living testament to the cost of war. Please do let me know in the comments below if you agree with my location choice for this art. Fireheart Rise. Still in Ascalon, we venture back to Fireheart Rise and the seat of the Flame Legion's power, the Citadel of Flame. The environment artists have translated the artwork so closely, I think it's almost inarguable that this is the location 
The menace of Fireheart Rise is striking. The dark color palette, sharp shape, language, together with the physical hazards of the zone and copious enemies, mark its character. To the cool depths of the Straits of Devastation, when I saw this image, an old personal story mission leapt to mind. The Plaza of Lost Wisdom, deep beneath the waves, where the ocean has a greenish blue hue. In these dark waters waits the sunken Temple of Abaddon that still holds all the mystery and menace one could hope for the god of secrets and water. On to Kike's concept for the centaur. Now, sadly, I think in this instance, the concept outshines the assets. The centaur in-game lack the nobility and splendor shown in this work. I have to say, when I first spied Ventari in the dreamscape, I was, well, disappointed at how little presence his character seemed to have. Let me know if you agree or disagree in the comments below. To my eyes, this is a concept for Maguma, the heart of both the Silvari race and the area settled by the Asurans fleeing the rising of Primorders. On the screen, you will see the lush Caledon Forest. It's a stunning map and a complete joy, at least for me, because this was the first map that I ever got to explore on my very first character, Asphodelus. It's an absolutely gorgeous character. Could easily be an early version of Erstagolkin, though of course I'm not 100% certain that that is what it was. But, I have to say, the armor does bear a striking resemblance to her iconic, almost there, gear. Sans, of course, the inexplicable bustle. Why the bustle? Jamie Jones. I can see echoes of Aureen in the facial structure of his concept work. I can see the proud stance of the sky scale, and even a hint of the wyvern from the Heart of Thorns. Let me know if you think we will be getting more flying mounts in the future, or do you think with both a glider and hovering mount, ArenaNet have maxed out the potential for sky-bound puppies? Jamie Yang, her very sweet-looking Silvari concept, has the beginnings of what would become the salads that we love today. Originally, the Silvari characters were going to be far more human until a radical about face was ordered. Today, we enjoy an excessive gambit of colors, facial structures, and a wildly diverse head ornamentation for our avatars. Richard Anderson, and it is him you have to thank for the wonderful subterranean structures of the dredge. I'm not sure if we can blame him too for the hellish guild race, which has you traversing these wooden towers guarded by angry naked mole rats, but it was his original idea, so I'm just gonna say it. Dude, what were you thinking? <sighs> Matthew Barrett. Now, you can pick any location in Metrica province and you will be hard pressed to find a single asset or structure not influenced by his brush strokes. Ratasum, Metrica province and Ratanova are a masterclass in environmental storytelling. Now, of course, these are just a few of the wonderful works of art in the book, truly a tiny sample of a stunning body of work which has helped to build our much loved world of Tyria. Now, on to the hunt. These three images I couldn't readily find locations for myself, so I lay the challenge at your feet. Find and share with me any and all locations you think are inspired by them, and share them with me at again Crichton underscore Herald on Twitter or in the comments below. I will say that the first with the dragon head over the pit does have an echo of the crowned pavilion, maybe in a different universe. I want to thank ArenaNet for the wonderful art book that these images were taken from, and I want to thank Ada, Hayne, Kyle Nelson, Cobb, 
Jolly Joe Star, Molini, Dark Griever, and all my wonderful patrons, without whom I would be unable to dedicate the time and resources I do to my content creation, I can never thank you all enough. You are my heroes. Now please do like this video if you did, share and subscribe too if the mood takes you, and please do come back and join me again very soon for more Guild Wars 2 goodness. But until we meet again, as always, thanks for watching.